This John Lothian News video is sponsored by Over the past 18 months, the OTC derivatives world began mandatory reporting into trade repositories. Now that we have had some time to work through the logistics, it's time for a rethink. Jonathan Thursby, president of Global Repository Services at CME Group, says the CFTC and global regulators are looking at revisions to the rules, and he lays out his wish list for a new and improved framework. Last year, there was a request for comment out uh, about 70 questions. How is reporting going? How can it be fixed? A lot of comments came back in on that. We started out with having a kind of one size fits all for both the non-cleared and the cleared markets. And uh, there's a recognition not only in the US, but globally, uh, we're seeing a trend towards seeing that you need to have a different type of reporting structure for different types of uh, clearing structures. There's actually work underway now. It's just starting up, uh, primarily led by IOSCO to look at fields, look where they can be harmonized across. Um, like I said, that work is just starting. Uh, then that would go to the regulators who would then work into their jurisdictions to then push that out to the trade repositories and ultimately down to the reporters. So we need some patience because that's going to take a while. I think we need to make uh, work around a product ID system. I think that needs to be a top priority. Uh, it's, the, it's the main mechanism that's going to allow you to look horizontally across all the markets either within one jurisdiction or globally. And in the absence of that, it's really, I think, hurting reporting quite a bit because you're not able to analyze the data and I, and I think it's hard to um, report uniformly into the TRs. So if there's three main ID systems, uh, transaction level ID, the product level ID, and then the um, legal entity firm, uh, LEI is the furthest along. It was the first to get out. There's some good structure around that. It's been uh, it's been uh, widely adopted. Um, we've had some time to see how it works. I'd say generally speaking, LEI is working pretty well. And then there's another part that we're not really talking about right now, which is kind of a hierarchy, uh, uh, a corporate family structure. Because if you really want to get into seeing where systemic risk is, if we now get really into the heart of what, what regulatory bodies are, are looking to do, um, then you know, just to say to look at Barclays isn't enough um, to say that, because then you say, well, which legal entity ID, right? Well, then they have many LEIs associated with them. And regulators now are working to try to build their own local kind of corporate family tree together. But if you were actually to modify the LEI system to actually have that information directly there, so where each uh, owner of an LEI is then creating their own association within the corporate family, I think that would really help um, quite a bit. Uh, and I'd like to see that uh, really take hold more this year. I still believe that the, the number one um, area that we can get the most improvement out of is to uh, bring a second uh, structure into place, one for the cleared, one for the non-cleared. Um, and that there's different types of reporting to go along with that. What you have in the rules, whether it's the US, whether it's Europe, wherever it is around the world, they're largely uh, well-tuned for the non-cleared market. Where you can really see an improvement is on the cleared workflow. Uh, the CCPs uh, are already in place to do a lot of that reporting, and the infrastructure is already there. So uh, to uh, acknowledge that and to um, revise the rules to reflect that, I think you would see an improvement, um, a rapid improvement in the quality of reporting and the timeliness of reporting. There's one other topic that uh, doesn't get discussed as much, and I think it really goes towards the quality of reporting, and that's... Uh, the concept that uh, whether you have one side report or both sides report. When you have uh, an obligation on both sides to report, what's really happening is one side is delegating to the other. And so I don't think you're really getting that higher quality data. This goes back to the conversation about uh, are there different market structures uh, for cleared versus non-cleared. In, in, a, in a cleared world, I, I think you have a really obvious reporter. It's the CCP. I think you can trust that the data is good. If the data is, if the data from the CCP is not good as a single reporter, I think you have big, bigger issues. Um, and on the non-cleared side, um, there is some value, I think, in having both parties have some role. Uh, the model I think that has proven out to be the best is where you have one party obligated report and the other one has an obligation to go in and check the validity of the data, which is different than having a responsibility to report themselves.